Ivan the Terrible is one of the most interesting and controversial figures in the history of Russia. Everyone knows about his cruelty. Having ascended the throne, Ivan the Terrible surrounded himself with people who shared his love of violence. In particular, he created an army of guardsmen who executed people on his orders. The king considered torture and other manifestation of violence as a kind of entertainment to which he and his entourage indulged in great pleasure. Most often, the boyars and their families became victims of the king's disfavor. The persons expected of treason was brought to the square before the eyes of the king and the gathered crowd, chained to a tube of water, and after that the cauldron was set on fire, slowly cooking the person alive. After the execution, the guardsmen executed the whole family of the guilty. To satisfy his thirst for the blood, the king changed many of the laws on punishments, replacing fines or references for the slightest offenses with a death sentence. Particularly frequent at the time was the execution by Im imposing a criminal on a long stake in the central square. During the pogrom in Novgorod, the king with his son and his army took several hundred or even thousands of people out of the crowd and tortured them, and then killed. They set fire to people using a special mixture, and after people were still alive, they threw them into the ice river where they died. Ivan the Terrible was a big lover of dog hunting. He transferred this love to his own execution. A special honor to be tortured by the king was awarded to be shop of Novgorod Leonid. The king ordered that he be sewn into the skin of a bear, and then he lowered hungry dogs to the bishop, which instantly tore the skin and be the unfortunate one. Diplomat Ivan Viscovati tried to explain to Ivan the Terrible that he had acted dishonestly with a group of bayars and paid for it. Ivan Viscovati was tied to a pole, and then the king's close associates cut a piece from his body until the poor fellow died of blood loss. The special situation at the court did not save anyone. An official supplier of uh, poisons and a doctor, Alicia Bamelia, was at one terrible moment for him terribly tortured. He was tied to a rock, thereby twisting the joints of his arms and legs, and then, holding this position, set on fire. Ivan the Terrible was married four times. Those of his wives who did not die of their own death were either exiled to the monastery or killed by him. When the king married on Maria Dolgoruka, after the first night he doubted her innocence and ordered to drown the woman in the palace pond. But perhaps the most uh, out of the ordinary act was uh, the murder by uh, Ivan the Terrible of his son. The king seized uh, his heavy iron staff and began to beat his son. Fatal for the son was a blow to the temple, after which he died. Most likely the fault in his cruelty lies in his childhood. The first Russian king had a very difficult and, and happy childhood. One grew up in atmosphere of palace cups, the struggle for power of the warring clans of the Shuisky and Belsky warring among themselves. The murders, intrigues, and violence surrounding him contributed to the development of uh, suspicion, revenge, and cruelty in him. The tendency to torture living beings was manifested uh, in one already in childhood, and close associates approved it. It was difficult for the child to find out what was good and what was bad. Each clan tried to lure the young ruler to its side. 
not understanding how this could affect the boy. The king lived in constant fear and fear of conspiracies and attempts on his life, which were revealed almost every day. Execution followed one after another. By this, the king wanted to show that he would be merciless to all who betray him, but would show mercy with those who remained faithful to him. One of the problems of the king was his selfishness. He could not imagine how other people feel bad from his actions. Gradually, with his terror, he turned most people against himself. Perhaps sometimes he understood this, but he was not going to concede. In the second half of his life, he repeatedly repented of all his actions. In this way, in one the terrible you can see both the villain and the unfortunate, constantly suffering person.